Are you thinking about becoming a registered dietitian or in the process of becoming one? If so, this video is for you. I'm Holly Every Newell Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. I am a registered dietitian, holistic nutritionist, and fitness coach. And I want to make a video to share a little bit about my journey to becoming a registered dietitian to help you out. This video is especially for anyone who might be career changing into becoming a registered dietitian because it's a little bit more complicated than this if this is your first career path. In my late 30s, I decided to take the path of becoming a registered dietitian, go back to school and go through the whole process. Now, if you are a career changer like me, for the most part, you're going to have to find a post-baccalaureate program that is accredited by Ascend in nutrition, nutritional science, something along those lines. If you were just going to college for the first time, it's quite a bit simpler. You just have to find an accredited program in nutrition that will set you up for a dietetic internship and to be able to take the exam. So back to anyone who is career changing for me and what this might mean for you is because I did not have even a related degree, I had to go back to do prerequisites at a community college nearby. So I had to go back and do things like um, anatomy and physiology and microbiology and organic chemistry and all of these science classes that are required for a degree. So before I could even get into the post-baccalaureate program, I had to go to school to meet the prerequisites in order to apply to get into that college for that program. So that's something to consider if you are thinking about becoming a registered dietitian is if you don't have that science background, you're going to have to go back to school to get those classes done first. While I was waiting to get into that, I also became certified as a holistic nutritionist. And part of why I share this is because if you don't have a background in nutrition, you don't really have much experience, you've never even worked in, say, food service, like as a waitress or a cook or anything like that, once you get to the point of applying for a dietetic internship, you need some sort of experience in nutrition or something related. This will help you get an internship. If you don't have that, you might want to start looking now for even a job, like I said, in food service or at a hospital or in like a food bank or something like that. Any type of experience will help you later down the line. Once you have your degree in nutrition, then you have to apply to a dietetic internship. Again, these are accredited programs that will set you up to be able to take your RD exam. So first of all, know that these are internships that you pay to do. You do not get paid for them and they are not free. So it's almost like another year of college. So wanted to share that to make sure that you know that ahead of time, because a lot of us had no idea going into our program that we were going to be spending you know, somewhere around another $10,000 to finish our program. So really important to understand that before you dive in and commit to the process. So in order to get into these internships, you have to basically have a resume. You have to have a personal statement like you do for college. You have to fill out this whole online application. Basically, it's a process. Um, it's called DICUS. You apply to a, however many schools or programs you want to apply to, and then you go through a matching process to get into it. The good news is a lot of times if you don't match, there's a second round of matching that you can try to get matched to a school at that point. One other thing to know about like your local university program compared to a distance program is when you go to a local university, you will basically be given everything to you. So they have the internship rotations chosen already. They have your preceptors for you. They will just basically send you out to those places to get your internship done. Usually going to be a lot of work in hospitals and a lot of other really good programs. With a distance internship, you have to find your own rotations. So nothing is given to you. You have to go out, you have to call all kinds of medical professionals and registered dietitians and see if you can do an internship with them. So there is a positive and a negative side to this. The downside is you have to do a lot more work with a distance internship to find those rotations and to find ones that qualify and then you can get the hours and the experience. So it's a lot of time looking to find those preceptors. The positive side of these distance internships is that you get to choose your preceptors. I was able to find 
preceptors that lived really close or that worked really close to me, um, where some programs you're spending two hours in the car or an hour in the car driving to go to an internship that your school has assigned you to and you don't have a choice around it. I got to find local people. I could work with remote preceptors. I had a lot more options. But again, this can also cause a little bit of a headache and this did cause a few hiccups for me in the process of my internship. So I started with my food service rotation, which was at a school district. I spent a lot of time in and around the kitchen. I also spent a lot of time just in the office working on projects. My second rotation was in my worksite wellness rotation. So this was directly with my internship program. I worked with their company um, doing things like blogs and presentations and classes and coming up with a wellness program all these different things to help learn different aspects of corporate wellness so that was my second rotation that was like an elective so a lot of times you will have electives within your program that's basically what mine was and then my third rotation um, so the way this worked out for me and i had a very flexible program which was great I had my clinical rotation, which actually split up into two different locations and two different preceptors. So I did half of my hours over the winter time at a hospital that was about 30 minutes from my house. And then I broke that up just the way it worked with when preceptors were available to me. So I did half my clinical, then I did my community rotation. So this was at a Head Start program. And then I finished up my clinical. So I did the last half of my clinical hours at a dialysis clinic. And what I will say about this is I was not looking forward to any of my clinical work. However, I loved both of my clinical rotations. Um, I really enjoyed them. I had amazing preceptors, so easy to work with. And I actually really enjoyed both of those rotations. So if you are someone who's a little bit scared about going into an internship and you think you're really going to hate something, you might, <laughs> but you might also end up being surprised how much you enjoy it. And I had heard that from many other people as well. So go in very open-minded and just be ready to learn and participate. And you might be surprised with what you enjoy. So that process basically took me, I believe it was like nine to 10 months. Generally, most internships do last at least eight months. Um, up to probably close to a year, depending on the program that you go with. All right, so then the last step is the RD exam, the big stressful exam that we all have to go through to become a registered dietitian. So what I did for this, and everyone's different, right, but I'll just share my experience of how I passed the exam. During my internship, they gave us pages and pages, like hundreds of pages of documents for each section of the RD exam, so each domain. So we had these four different study guides with tons and tons of information, which is an amazing resource. So basically, while I was going through my internship, I just started reading through those, highlighting, making notes, trying to learn. And that took me quite a bit of time because I was just doing it maybe a couple hours a week, a little bit on the weekend. Then my internship also gave us access to a app called pocket prep medical pocket prep this is a phenomenal resource for the rd exam if you need something to help you so i also use that so i would go through quizzes here and there during the week go through the weekend and just kind of starting to learn all of these different terms and diseases right and all these different things you have to know for the rd exam once i finished my rotation so i finished in the end of april or finished my internship then I got down to like hardcore studying. So basically for the month of May and June, I took two vacations, which was, I would highly recommend that like right out of your internship and right out of school, go on a vacation, take a break, get a little mental break, and then come back and study. Otherwise, I basically was at home studying from anywhere from about three to six hours a day, depending on how disciplined I was that day and how much I had going on. Basically what I did is I made note cards from all of those study guides that I had gotten from my internship and really honed down on the things I felt like I didn't know well. So there was plenty of stuff that I felt pretty comfortable with, especially after going through the internship. So anything I didn't feel like I knew well, I wrote it down and made a note card, partially because the writing down process helps to get it into your head. So I made little flashcards I could use. And then I also used the Gene Inman study guides, 
which I loved. I felt like they were basically a shorter version of what my internship gave me. But I think the biggest gem of those study guides is that there are tons of practice test questions. So as I got closer to the exam, I started going through all of those practice tests, sitting down for 125 questions at least, because that's the minimum you get on the exam, and just got used to sitting there for at least 125 questions and just answering without distractions, without getting up and doing anything else, and kind of getting used to that test taking format. And then you're able to go through and check the answers and, you know, study up on the things that you missed. There are a few other resources I would recommend while prepping for your RD exam. So I also attended several webinars from All Access Dietetics. I didn't purchase their program, but those webinars had some really good tips for how to study to help you be more successful. And I felt those, like those really helped me. I also found a podcast and Facebook group um, called Dietetics with Dana. That's the podcast, but she has a Facebook study group and she runs through pretty quickly on questions and answers. It can be a bit hard to follow at times, but her Facebook page has all sorts of questions. So she would post questions and then people in the group can post questions. And so it's just kind of another place to find really good practice test questions to run through. And then she gives explanations of why those are the answers. Similarly, there is a podcast called Chomping Down the Dietetic Exam which I believe he is no longer producing, but there are several episodes on there and he's really, really good at giving practice questions and clearly breaking down why they are the answer and giving really good memory tips. So that's a really useful podcast. And then the other podcast I used was the RD exam made easy uh, by Jana Nickel. So this was a great one. I was training for a half marathon and a triathlon during a lot of my internship. So I would just put this podcast on while I ran. A lot of the episodes were probably anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So on like a long, slow run, I would just go out on the road and listen to her. And I felt like running, I tend to like listen and pay attention better. So that was a really helpful way for me to study as well. Not just sitting in front of the computer, but actually being moving and active and just listening to people talk about it. I learned a lot from that podcast as well. I also use a lot of Quizlet. So I would go on Quizlet and look and just try and find a big variety of questions because I found that Pocket Prep had one style of questions while Inman had a very different style of questions. And then I'd go on Quizlet and I'd find totally different types of questions. So I think that was helpful for me to understand the different way that questions might be asked and to be hit with questions. It was like, oh, wow, I have no idea. I've never even thought about this subject. Um, and then have to go and study things that maybe you didn't learn in school or your internship and be well prepared for the test. So I would recommend using a variety of resources, using different types, right? So I had like the digital online Quizlet flashcards. I had my own flashcards. I had pocket prep. I had test questions. So try to find a variety of different ways to test yourself. I felt like that was really helpful. So all in all, I would say that I studied for approximately eight six to eight weeks. If you took out the vacation, I probably studied for about six weeks and studied, like I said, anywhere from about three to six hours per day. I know plenty of people who studied far less than that and still passed the exam on their first try. Luckily, I also passed the exam on my first try. So that's kind of a brief recap of my experience of going back to school, getting into an internship, taking the RD exam, so I hope that's helpful to you to give you some idea of what to expect and things to know before you dive into it. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to help. I don't want to make a super duper long video and this is already getting long. So feel free to drop questions and comments down below and I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe for future videos on nutrition, fitness, health, and until my next video, blessings on your dietetics journey.